I am a man who would fight for your honor. I'll be the hero you're dreaming of. We'll live forever, knowing together that we did it all. The glory of love. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley and director from deep in the bowels of our underground lair, where we're finally off the Twitter shadow ban list, and we're thriving, and we're here. How you doing, Andrew? I, I'm doing good. Maybe maybe you're off the banning list. I don't know. My my <laughs> tweets don't, don't seem to have the audience they used to. But yeah. Oh well, I bypass them every chance I get. <laughs> it, you know, getting banned on YouTube or whatever was the uh, at least mine anyway. Into yeah. The being targeted uh, for some silly, uh, you know. Whatever they they call it over there, yeah. shadow banning or the the uh, well, what do you call them the uh, controlling misinformation and malinformation. Andrew. But what is, what does the guy from Facebook call it? Algorithms. I don't right. even know what that means. But uh, something Al Gore came up with when he said he cussed. <laughs> That's terrible. By the way, okay. Peter Cetera is the singer. I mean, yeah. It's Karate like, Kid Two soundtrack. Like, yeah, that's like the first song Molly and I ever danced to. Or really? Like that. Yeah, yeah. So wow, I think I sang it. Did you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's how you won her heart, right there. Yeah, well, a few too many gins that night. <laughs> I think I <laughs> think that was think that was the thing. Yeah. But, um, well, we needed a song that declared gender loud and proud. Yeah, so, and yes. you know, Karate Kid Part Two, one of the few sequels, in my opinion, I liked two. Mm-hmm. Not as much as one, but I, I thought two lived up to absolutely the hype. Uh, yeah, three you could put that in a trash can <laughs> with Rocky Five, but uh, you know, yeah. or Phantom Menace, right? Uh, but uh, one and two uh, were both terrific. Yeah, absolutely. But when three comes along and Ralph Macchio is thirty-one years old playing in a high school, right, or whatever he was planting that. trees and but that was whatever. the that was yeah. the eighties thing though to get a twenty-five year old oh, yeah. to play an eighteen year old. I mean, absolutely. Judd Nelson, how old was he during the Breakfast Club? I mean. Oh. <laughs> Forty. <laughs> that was right after St. Elmo's fire when he was working for a senator. Right. And then <laughs> he's then he and uh he looked like he was twenty years older than uh uh, uh Rusty from uh, Yeah, uh Corey Hall Michael Corey Anthony Hame or something. Or, no, or, no, no. Yeah, Carl Mark yeah, Mike Michael Anthony that Hall, that was yeah, the guy's that's name. That's the guy. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that was it was pretty bad. <laughs> Great movie. I mean, it couldn't yeah. cost much to make Breakfast Club. No, shot the whole thing in a freaking library. Yeah, I mean, pretty that much. Have been, I mean, you know, ruined a brat, few ceiling tiles. Right with the Brat Pack. Yeah, and uh, the guy, the guy from Die Hard, the cop from Die Hard, yeah. who played the principal, <laughs> Dwayne T. Robinson. So, <laughs> how you been anyway? Good yeah. Thanksgiving and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have plenty of, of leftovers, and uh, now I'm back to having to what, having eat other things one, again. One salad so. a month, you're back to that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with eating hearty, in my yeah. opinion. Well. Anyhow. Um, Jay, yeah. interesting news today, before we get into all your fun transgender uh, fun things that uh, a county you live in is, is up to. Did you see the, uh, why is her name escaping me? The lady basketball player who was in yes. Russia. Yeah, the Did, one the one they traded for the, like, weapons expert or whatever. No, I, I wanted to bring yeah. this up. Viktor Bolt. Did I say that good Russian? Sure. Viktor Bolt. This is who we traded for a basketball player. Now, right. let me say something. I don't like Brittany Griner. I can't stand her. Yeah. But she's an American citizen. She doesn't deserve what's happened to her. And she deserves to come back to this country. I, I can disagree with her. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but she doesn't deserve what she's gotten. But let me tell you something. This is earth to Joe Biden here. and This is why I really sit here and I wonder who's really in charge. Right. Because while I believe Miss Greiner is, is not guilty of what she is charged of, well, I believe... She should be a free person in back in the United States. Yeah. The president has a responsibility that's a little bit bigger than that. Right. And when you are going to send Victor LeBolt 
back yeah. to run. Of course, the media is downplaying who this guy is and all that. Do we yeah. know who v- Victor Lebot really is? Well, yeah, he's an arms dealer. Ah, he's more than that, though. I mean, th- this guy is just bad news all around. Yeah. Um, Russian officials, this is from foxnews.com, see Bolt as a high-value as- asset, and we're pushing hard to exchange, basically to exchange him. Moscow wants him back because he possesses critical insights that he can share with his former agency. Having been in a U.S. prison, interrogated by U.S. officials, he knows what our intelligence requirements are and other information that is valuable to Russians. Yeah. So that's just wonderful then, isn't it? That that's, that's the guy. Uh, what is his nickname? I don't know. He's got a nickname. What the hell was it? Merchant of Death. Oh, yes, that's it. The Merchant of Death. Sounds lovely. That sounds like someone we want out uh, running around. This is what he received a prison sentence for in the United States. In 2011, he was convicted of conspiracy to kill Americans, conspiracy to deliver anti-aircraft missiles, and aiding a terrorist organization. And this is who we traded for a basketball player. Right. Right. And we couldn't even get a player to be named later in the deal. Yeah, or, or they, cash they, considerations. They they ended up leaving a former Marine, Paul Whelan, yes. over there, who yeah. deserved to come back. Somebody they should have prioritized. I'm sorry, he's not famous. Uh, he can't dribble as good. I don't know, I don't know that, if Griner can dribble all that well. But anyhow, yeah, um, yeah, he was trumped up on bogus. Yeah espionage or, or spy right. which is total bull um so i mean we this goes to show a couple things here that, that yeah. i take from this one we have no leverage in moscow zero right i mean we can't get a marine for the merchant of death well, do you think they really tried? No, I no. don't think so. I think that the good pub that they know they're going to get, right. Griner happens to be uh, playing for the other team, which is also important to these people. Right. So I think that ultimately she it's... Hits the intersectionality matrix. Yeah, at I mean, high she level. checks the boxes. Yeah. So she's the top priority. And... um. We're willing to, I mean, I mean here, here's the amazing part. We are literally sending gazillions of weapons, gazillions of dollars to Ukraine, which, by the way, could all be captured by the Russians. Yeah. In alleged nuclear power. Yeah, okay, Russia has some old warheads from the 70s or something. I mean, personally, I think uh, Pakistan is more dangerous than <laughs> Russia. And I bet they have more yeah. updated nuclear weapons than the Russians do. Yeah. You know, so... This in this proxy war or whatever you want to call it that we're in. I mean, we're in some uh, absolutely so, some sort of war with the Russians. We're helping Ukraine to fight the Russians. We are part of this war, whether we like it or not. Yeah, but I mean, what's the difference between that and and uh, you know aiding countries who fought Hitler and Mussolini. Okay, our troops aren't over there dying. Right. But we're still taking sides and funding one side. And by the way, you know, the Republicans have made a big stink in the House about how they're going to scrutinize this money. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That'll be our first disappointment. Yes, it with will. With this new House, because they won't do squat. Mm-hmm. There's enough. There's a contingency that wants to do something. They don't have the votes to no. do that. Um, there's not enough Democrats who care. Yeah. Uh, they'll protect Biden if they have to. So uh, we're not going to see any no any listing here. You, every thousand bucks in your checking account, mm-hmm. Biden can go in and peek at. But oh we, no, it's six hundred. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I, I just figured since you're you have so much money, Jay. Oh yeah. Uh, that you know, but uh, we're not going to have uh, any access to where our tax dollars have gone. No. But this, but I mean. When you make a deal like this, I mean, this just tells me, again, we're willing to give the merchant of death back to the Russians. Yeah. How seriously are we fighting the Russians here? 
I, I, I don't know how seriously we're fighting the Russians. We're throwing all sorts of money at Ukraine. Who knows what they're spending it on? It could be hubba bubba bubble gum. It could be weapons. It could be pension funds. We don't know. Huh. We don't know where any of it goes. But I'll tell you this, that we are still involved. You know, it's oh, yeah. our money going over there. They are getting weapons that are being used uh, you know, there's the, I don't know we, what we recently, we pull out this new remote control, uh, bomber, right? Did you see that? I have heard to, about to, it, to put the fear into China and I suppose a little bit into, <laughs> you know, Putin too, but it doesn't seem to be doing too much. Hey, you know what China can do in yeah. response? Build more coal plants. Right. That's that's their response. To keep that. stealing our information right. on TikTok. Yeah, or, or keep uh, us dependent on them for energy and manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I've said this before and I'll say it again. I I one thing that is not being discussed is our responsibility and President Biden's responsibility. When it's come to escalating this Ukraine conflict, I mean, yeah. we go back. You and I have talked about this before about the revolution in 2014, and no question we fomented. Uh, we yeah. have pushed and pro. I mean, this is called an unprovoked war. Look, yeah. I hate the war over there. I do too. It's wrong. I, I am not defending it, but to say it's unprovoked, you know, yeah. I mean, if the Russians installed a government in Mexico City, I, I don't think, or in Ottawa, I don't think we'd sit around and do nothing. That's just my guess. Though, yeah, I don't know. Silly. <sighs> Silly. But I, I think it will continue. This may continue. This may be the new Afghanistan. Oh, boy. Right now. Well, I mean, I, you, you tell me what's the end game here. How does the war end? <sighs> We're not negotiating. We're telling Ukraine not to negotiate. Right. So where, where does the war, how, how does it go? Well, yeah, that's that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? I mean, you've got Russia, which is still supplying gas and stuff to a lot of Europe, and it's coming into the cold season, and they're going to need that for heat. Um, so Europe doesn't want to make them too angry right now, but at the same time, of course, time, they can't produce their own right. <laughs> at the same time, Europe has been involved in this as well, and we've explained this before, where you have really two sides. You have the globalists, which are Europe and Canada and the United States and all of those countries. And then you have the nationalists, you have China and you have Russia and, and, and groups like that that want to preserve national sovereignty, but with a dictatorial-like government. It's not... You see, nationalism isn't bad. Nationalism, you know, it, it putting your country first, making sure you take care of your people, your own needs, that's not a bad thing. What's bad is when it's done through a dictator. That is what they want to do. That's the Alan, Alexander Dugan model. That is, the, that is completely different than what we here in America know as nationalism and patriotism. Now... Now, here's the question, though. What's yeah. worse, globalism or nationalism through a dictatorship? <laughs> I'm not, it's pretty close, in it's my opinion. It's pretty bad, yeah. But you have the two of those forces. I mean, that's really what this is about. Who's going to be the new world power? It's not going to be Russia. I'll tell you that because well, it's, it's they're... China or the United it's either, States. Well, it's either going to be China or it's going to be this globalist cadre of nations that that are setting themselves up because because right, biden but, is bringing the united states down in, right in, but let's be blunt here yes. these other countries can't do it without the united states oh no western we're, we'll europe be part of it western europe can't do anything on yeah, its own luxembourg ain't gonna do it well, they but, have no economies they have no military superiority um they're just yeah. become a bunch of lazy socialists so it's the u.s or china being the leaders with others following. It's one way or the other. Right now, I would say China's winning. And I yeah. think it's not close. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I would I would sadly agree with that. But much of it is due to us 
I mean, much of it is our, yeah, you know, bad trade policies, our bad uh, uh, government handling of money, our bad. Uh, yep. Uh, we've let all these jobs go overseas. We've embraced the globalists. We've, uh, mm-hmm. you know, globalists know no boundaries. That's that's the whole point of globalism. That there's something far, far away that governs everybody, whether it's official or not. Yeah. And that's globalism. So, but I mean, the same. You you've got similar races happening happening on each side to jockey for this position. China and the United States would both like to be the world currency, and there are some other players in that too. I don't know that they're going to be able to do that with their basket of currencies, but the U.S. digital currency is already to be tested. It it's they've been working on it for the last six months. It's done. It's ready to be tested. So that by, I think they said March, if there's some sort of financial um, catastrophe globally, that they're ready to just roll with it. Which they'll manufacture. Right, right. If it doesn't happen, they'll make it Oh, exactly, exactly. But this whole new global currency then, you tie it in with a social credit score like in China where, oh, you're fat, you can't be eating at McDonald's, or you're a conservative, you can't be shopping at the gun store, or you're this, or you're that, or you don't have enough money, no, you can't go to debt, whatever, whatever, whatever. And the Federal Reserve controls all of this because it's in a Federal Reserve account. And so you've got that on one side, and then on the other side, you have the social credit scores when you go, you know, you're too too close to somebody else that... uh, is a dissident or you're you know you're in the wrong places or you're spending money on wrong things your score goes down they've all they've already got that nailed uh you know thank you to google and facebook for helping them out with that um and then now you know over here we're building that same kind of apparatus and so how long is it until we actually i don't know uh you know it this is the war it's a race to be able to have control and and to be the the world power. Okay. Well, before we get going too far, let me ask yeah. you one question on that. What what do, does the, what should we be doing to counter China? If it's not a digital dollar, and I agree, it shouldn't be. Yeah. How do we make the dollar stronger? How do we how do we how do we win this? Stop spending money. How about that? <laughs> the government has to stop spending money. They have to stop going into debt. They have to shore up the dollar. They have to, I mean, let's just start doing what Trump did when he was president again. Let's let's start, you know, yeah, we're going to have to call some dollars back in, right? We're going to have to raise interest rates for a while. Uh, we're going to have to beat back this inflation. We got to get people back to work and, and manufacturing things and and creating things. Uh, we can't have loafers sitting around getting a paycheck for doing nothing. We and and we have to start taking taking off the things the the constrictions that aren't allowing to, us to do things. Tell the car companies, okay, we're not going to make you turn all electric by twenty thirty. Let's let Let's let the market win out. Whatever people want. Um, Energy independence. Energy independence. All of these things. We were kicking China's butt until Joe Biden got into office and we went the complete wrong direction. And now they are the ones who are looking like. Almost like it was played out a little bit. Almost Uh, like it was cooked up somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. It It just so happens that. China with a level four lab over there just happens to yeah. to leak out a, a virus. And, and we do nothing about it. Of course not. We're probably still giving them money. Probably. I mean, I don't even want to know, quite frankly. I don't want to know what we're doing. It's, it's... Yeah. Speaking of not wanting to know things, <laughs> Jay, you live in Hennepin County, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. I. I've I've tried to get out. Uh, I haven't really tried to get out, but yeah, it's bad. Well, lots of uninteresting things going on here in Hennepin County. Uh, you got to love, and I'll tell you what, you got to love the county board, man. There's so much uh, dissent on that county oh, board. Oh, you know it. That conservative Jeff Lundy is tearing it up, <laughs> making a difference like you wouldn't believe. 
standing for conservative principles. Oh, the guy is just amazing. <laughs> well, he fits right in, I think, with the uh, the lug nuts who are there uh, uh. on that uh, council right or on that board right now. Yeah, and they're doing some interesting. Well, I am I going to call it interesting things that they're doing? I guess so. It's it's interesting. Jay, enlighten us, uh. enlighten us on what they're doing. Why do I have to bring the bad news? Yeah, because I want to just sit here and critique it. Ah. <laughs> uh. Hennepin County, this is Alpha News, by the way, reporting Hennepin County contractors forced to affirm gender identity. So the Department of Community (laughs) Corrections and Rehabilitation Director, Catherine Johnson, recently noted that the changes are an important step to treating transgender and gender nonconforming residents and employees equitably. There's that word, equitably. What's a gender nonconformist? Ah, I'm not really a boy or a girl, or I'm not sure if I'm a boy or a girl, or... Well, I'll tell you uh, what, a, drop I'm your a, drawers and I'll tell you. I'm a rainbow unicorn <laughs> potato. I, I I don't know. They have so many of them <laughs> now. Unicorns like, real? Um, I don't think they are, okay. I don't think so but... Contractors doing business with Hennepin County will be forced to affirm the gender identity of all Minnesotans or risk being canceled thanks to radical pro-LGBT measure approved by the county commissioners in June. Uh, Board Action Request 22-0216, which passed by a 7-0 vote this summer, committed the county to the vague goal of creating a safe and welcoming place for LGBTQ plus people. What's the plus stand for? Um, So you have like... Lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, I... But it wasn't queer. Yeah, I don't know why that's different. Uh, I, A, uh, what's the, I don't know. L-M-N-O-P. A, I think is asexual. I don't know. I, I don't know. Inquisit, no, Q is questioning. I I don't, I can't keep track of it. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) I guess I should laugh, but I'm questioning. I'm not sure what I am. I'm just questioning. Okay. (laughs) You can move up and down the scale, I guess. I don't uh, gender know. agnostic is that is that what you would call hey, that? Shit. Yes. Oh, uh, so um, yes. Uh, hey, second district commissioner Irene Fernando yeah. introduced the legislation, which appears to lack a robust religious liberty clause. Uh, yesterday, I introduced the resolution of forming the, affirming the gender identity and the expression of Hennepin residents, workers, and clients. It also initiates a review process to ensure our contractors affirm gender identity as well. It passed 7-0, and I thank my colleagues for their support. You know what I'd love to see? With love, Irene Fernando. I'd love to see nobody bid on something. <laughs> Just no one. Yeah. All the kind of just collusion and just say, no, we're not bidding on any of this. Nobody's yeah. going to. <laughs> that, or, uh, I mean, that wouldn't deter Hennepin County. They're too dumb yeah. to. I notice. could put in a bid. I'll do that for a dollar. No. They'd have to pay me uh, a beggar's fortune. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this uh, board action request 220216. Um, they, they, it's all here, you know, um, I don't need to read the whole thing, but, uh, the description is to affirm gender identity and expression of residents, workers, and clients receiving county services, authorize county administrator to review and revise policies to ensure Hennepin County and those awarded contracts affirm gender identity and expression and, uh, you know, uh, it says where gender expression. Yes, yes, because you should be feel you should be able to feel free to dress as your preferred gender, Andrew. Okay, well, then I should prefer to express my religion as well, right? Yes, well, you should I under the that, First Amendment. Yes, that's, that's true. Guess that doesn't count. Um, 
that can stay out of the workplace, but right. your sexuality can't. Right? Yeah. Uh, here they kind of take a swipe at Florida. Uh, whereas there is expanding, expanding legislation across the country that excludes or discriminates LGBTQ plus youth workers and communities. Uh, but they didn't happen to state that, uh, you know, talking about very young kids in that Florida bill, I guess. But uh, what whatever. is this? What is this LGBTQT plus LMNOP youth? What is that? What is this? What is this thing now of kids I questioning know. their gender? Where did that start? I mean, clearly that's adults putting ideas into their heads. Oh, absolutely. No eight year old or 10 year old no. would ever even dream of this. Right. Right. And, and you know, they're trying to get it in younger and younger and younger. And there was, oh, what was the name? They're of in the, the birthing room. Yeah. They're in the birthing room. Just about. Just about. There was something that came in out there with recently, the hedge clippers. Yeah. <laughs> where somebody was fighting for the right to be able to cause kids to question, for lack of a better term, as young as three, that they need to start putting those ideas into their head about questioning their gender. It's, I don't know, it's nuts of ill. Um, you know, it, it, and this is another, gender nonconforming youth, especially youth of color, disproportionately experience oh. homelessness, involvement in the justice system, involvement in the child protection system, and poor educational outcomes, and are particularly vulnerable to sex trafficking. Therefore, be it resolved that Hennepin County affirms the gender expressions and gender identities asserted by each individual and commits to a, be a safe and welcoming county employer and service provider for LGBTQ plus people and be it further resolved that the Hennepin County Administrator is delegated authority to review and revise existing policies and remove barriers to ensure that any individual or group is receiving that is receiving county services can do so inclusive of their asserted gender identity and be it further resolved that the Hennepin County Administrator is delegated authority to review and revise existing policies policies and agreement language to ensure this aforementioned commitment to LGBTQ plus clients and communities is, is expected of partners or contracted providers. And lastly, be it further resolved that the county administrator is delegated authority to implement this action, including adopting new and revised policies and instituting mechanisms regarding contracts and agreements to comply with said policies. Huh? So this just gave a whole you know, lot you know, of power I'm, to the county administrator. And I would love if the county administrator just said, nah, I ah. ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't it say yeah. that the county administrator is the is in charge? Yeah. Nah, I ain't doing it. Yeah. Well, go, go fly a kite. That is a lot of power that I don't know... The county administrator. Is that yeah, the person who does the deals? They like do this? the hiring and firing of the heads of the departments. I'm sure that they set some of the internal policy, but some of this, I I don't know if they should have the power to set the policy for. Well, wait, wait a minute here. So are, are they also saying that, what, at my job, I have to um, confirm my gender to my employer? No, they're not saying that. They say, if you choose to, and you're doing business with Hennepin County or you work for Hennepin County, they've got to allow for you to be able to do that. And they've got to celebrate it, affirm you as, as a whatever you are today. So if you're gay, you have to come out and tell them that you are and do cartwheels and, uh, yeah, you know, I guess so. They got to throw you an a, apple pie a gay or, mitzvah what? or whatever a gay it is. Mitzvah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Some sort of party to celebrate that you're something else. I don't know. I don't mean that derogatory to Jews. I'm just right, saying. I'm just, I'm just thinking know. of a transgender getting. That's <laughs> just, I mean, oh boy. silly. What is the, I mean, what the hell is this? I, I don't know. So, and what is with all these resolutions? I mean, what is the point of this crap? 
Uh, just to break down the the traditional mores and and beliefs of of our country. I mean, that's really it. It, it. At the end of the day, until they have totally decimated America so they can rebuild what they want, which I, t- I hate to tell people who are LGBTQIA+, plus, 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 A, C, T, or uh, people that are black or people that are Latino or people, whoever is going to Hennepin County with the the thought that Hennepin County is going to do something for you, something for you in the short term until they can build what they want and they will discard you just like everybody else. No. They would never do I don't That think is that. exactly what liberals do time and time again. I don't think they, they use do. and they throw away and they eat their own. It just that's that's it. I'll tell you something. Yeah. Can I mention something else Hennepin County's up to? Uh, are we switching topics already? Yeah, because I'm, I'm sick of talking about... Uh, I'm already tired of it. Uh, really? <laughs> you got something else to say on it? Um, uh, There was something I know else you love there. talking a little, a little transgender talk. Oh, boy. It's something. Um, Let's see... As with all things at Hennepin County, you know, they bring in other people to to help with this because they don't know what they're doing. So they have to bring in, you know, these activists to, to create this stuff. Um, Do they have an office of the gender affirming now or something? <laughs> I'm sure that's a $35,000 a year position like everything else at Hennepin County. Yeah. Right? Oh, times three. Yes. It's, it's six figures all the time. Uh, Catherine Johnson, who is the uh, uh, Department of Community Corrections and Rehabilitation <laughs> Director. Hold on, hold yeah. on. She's talking about gender and her last name's Johnson. Okay, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Uh, she, she had written an email and, uh, in, of course, included in her email the pronoun she, her, hers, <laughs> she, her, hers, uh, further pointed out that following the board's decision to proclaim November 20th as Transgender Day of Remembrance, to make it sound like uh, D-Day, there would be two events. more important to them than D-Day. Sure is. There would be two events for employees of her department to attend. One, a training session hosted by a left-wing group called Gender Justice. (laughs) <laughs> Trading or training? Training. Oh, okay. And two, I would not want to see a, a transgender trading. That's what I was saying. Uh, that, I mean, oh. with normal, Could you imagine that? Normal people, it's like baseball cards. They trade <laughs> body parts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your chest for your... Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> And it's like a swap meet. Okay. Uh, they give and, Double D a whole new meaning. And uh, two, a showcase featuring local trans poets and spoken word artists. There once was oh. a transgender <laughs> from Pawtucket. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. <laughs> I'm a transgender and so are you. <laughs> I've got scars and it's still blue. Well, round and round they go. <laughs> I don't know. I... <laughs> oh, God, you're terrible. Oh, oh, there were two paths I could have taken, and I chose the path less traveled. Except now in this year of 2022, where it seems like almost 40 percent of kids are in somehow screwed up in the stuff. But all right. Uh, yeah, you would have had to shoot me in the head to go to that thing. I let's go. Let's just go. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, I got I mean, some go bongos. Your, you can you, shoot yourself in the head. That's fine. You can play. Still- <laughs> let's go. You can. I've got bongos. You can play the bongos, and I'll come up with some sort of. No, I'm gonna have Taco Bell before we go, so I have horrible <laughs> gas when when it starts. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Oh. But it's just terrible. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It was a transgender poet and what? Uh, Beat poets and and spoken word artists like it's 1969. Oh, okay. Uh, You need a goatee and a beret. You need Uh, uh, 
some graffiti, transgender uh, graffiti. I don't want to see transgender graffiti. Well, it changes. Um, yeah, it changes back and forth. So this gender justice thing, just looked it up here. Uh, here's the truth most Minnesotans don't know, and you can find this at genderjustice.us. Of course, for decades, anti-abortion lawmakers in our state have been quietly passing laws that restrict abortion access, intimidate providers and patients, and increase costs. Fact, 96... Uh, oh, we don't need to go into all that. So they're, they're... It's not just gender, it's also abortion rights so we already know that they're awesome this is a great group uh you know this is what i didn't understand when all of those protests were going on in front of the supreme court uh after roe got overturned and there were all these people there with like gay and trans flags i'm like all you gay people how is abortion <laughs> something you care about you're with somebody that you can't make pregnant and can't get you pregnant. If you get pregnant, it's because you meant to get pregnant because you did something to create like something specific, whether you got together with, with somebody for the sake of reproduction or you went to a clinic to get an, you know, a, an inseminated egg put in you, you're, you're not going to have an abortion. Why are you waving your flags at an abortion rally? I don't know. It, it just has to be solidarity with the, yeah. with the other lefties. It's yeah. just, I don't know. I, none of them are having abortions. That's all I know. Well, I want to know, when did transgender people, whatever that means, when did they get control over how we say it, talk? Or, I mean, when did this... You know, it's seemingly for me, it just kind of came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, transgenders are in charge of everything. Right. And we can't offend them. We can't disagree with them. Uh, we have to accommodate anything they want. I mean, yeah. when the hell did that start? Well, I missed I, it. Uh, yeah. I. Did it start with all the bathroom stuff from years ago? Uh, um, You know, that's some of it. Yeah. You know should have the right to use whatever bathroom we want to and and Which all of insane. that it's it's insane behavior you know and and we've seen what the fruit of this insane behavior is where somebody claims that they're a woman they get put into a girl's or a woman's prison and then they start raping people and and the women get pregnant that are are raped well i'm sorry and where are the women's groups here Oh, uh, nowhere. Where are they? Nowhere. A, they're either too afraid to speak out because there are plenty of them that are against this. Even even hardcore leftist feminists feminists are really against this. Yeah, the problem but, is instead of speaking out, they're just at home doing the dishes. <laughs> oh my word. I, I think some of them have spoken out and, and you've heard some of it, but a lot of it is tamped down by the press. I mean, it's hard to get out. And as we were talking about earlier with Twitter, it's really hard when the, the transgenders are put on a pedestal. Okay, again, yeah. again, it's not that hard if there's enough of them. Um, right. You know, and they need to go to different venues. Yeah. I mean, they can if they wanted to, they could. Yeah, well, maybe they're working with the Republican Party, and maybe that's why it's not getting done. <laughs> yeah, that's Sorry. the perfect thing. It's where everything goes to die. <laughs> Bring it there. Yeah. Uh, By the way, who's the new speaker? Did McCarthy win, or is he? Uh, they don't figure that out till January. Yeah, but the, we all know the vote's prearranged. I mean, from what I understand, he doesn't have the votes that's yet. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So. I heard. Yeah. Well, it's going to be your girlfriend, AOC. <laughs> no, it's not. Hey, all she needs is what? 10 Republicans to vote for? She could get that. I don't, uh, don't ask me how. I, I but... don't think she could get one Republican to well, vote for her. You never know. You might be able to peel off a few to go to somebody that's not as crazy, but, you know, like a. Uh, Henry Cuellar or some, someone like that, if he was, wanted to get at that position. But you're not going to get AOC in there by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I want to move on to something here. Okay. 
Good old, you want to know how much your tax dollars is spent to end homelessness. Ugh. Okay, Hennepin County update. This is from uh, District 3 Commissioner Marion Green, another one of your favorites. <laughs> Talking about everything Hennepin's, you know, if everything, if Hennepin County's doing everything to end homelessness, yes. uh, there shouldn't be any homeless after and I right? read all this. I mean, it's this is such a waste of our money. I would like to know if they've ended homelessness for one person. With what they've done. No, because everything they do is temporary. Everything right. they do is to feel good. Yeah. It's not to solve an actual problem. Um, this is like her little update or her... I don't even know where the hell this came from, but um, as many of you know, Hennepin County and regions across the country continue to experience a dire lack of options when it comes to affordable housing and shelter for our residents in need. Well, let me ask you something, Ms. Green. Um, who's constantly making it more unaffordable? Who is constantly raising property taxes? Mm-hmm. And renters pay property taxes. They just pay it through the rent. Right. Who is constantly raising energy costs, fuel costs, grocery costs? Who's doing that? The government, our government, and then they lecture everyone about, well, we're gonna we're we're gonna have affordable. Ho- You'd have affordable housing if we weren't paying so much for all the rest of this crap. <clears throat> now listen to this. Yeah. Pre-pandemic, the county was spending a hundred and forty-six million dollars annually on housing activities across income levels. <laughs> including emergency shelter, deep, deeply affordable housing. Not affordable housing. <laughs> deeply, deeply affordable. They got hey, two this basements. Pl- this place got rats, but uh, we'll give it yeah. to you for thirty-one grand. And home yeah. ownership assistance programs. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I- I'd like to know how many people, homeless people, were helped by by assistance programs. The answer is zero. So you have money going to homeless shelters, well, which is to, not permanent housing. They're going to bureaucrats mostly. Yeah, you got you got money going to to shelters, which is not permanent housing. Deep discount or deep what what do you call it? Deep. This is what she affordable calls. housing. Deeply affordable. Deeply housing. affordable. Which is horrible grammar, by the way. Oh, Worse yeah. than me. <laughs> It's like and she don't know how to talk. It has it has mold in the basement and rats, and they think they can pawn it off on somebody. I don't know. It's gonna have. But when are, when are <laughs> we gonna realize that throwing money at this doesn't work? Never. I got an idea about Never. these homeless because people. it's not their money. Yeah. Or how about we get them a job? Oh. You mean one of those? Get them a ride to. I'll, I'm willing. I'm willing to have my tax dollars spent getting them nice clothes, a ride to a job interview, or something like that. I'm willing to pay for that because yeah. I know if that person mm-hmm. has decent clothes, gets a job, blah blah blah, that person eventually will be off the system. Right. But the person that you put up in the Holiday Inn or the Hilton or wherever, or the Motel 6, we'll leave the light on for you. Yeah. <laughs> is just going to sit there and continuously have their continental breakfast uh-huh. and you know watch Dr. Phil. And if there's no demand that they do something, nothing's going to change. Yeah. So what? what's the point of... of of throwing a hundred and forty six million dollars annually. <sighs> and where is this affordable housing? Yeah, I don't know. The Hotels I... to Homes Project. That's the okay. <laughs> you wanted to know, Jay? Yes. Four hundred and sixty four people have gone from homelessness to permanent housing. Now she doesn't talk about what that costs us. Yeah. But 464 in a county of one and a half million have been helped by the 146 million. <laughs> They're now uh, or 1.2 million or whatever is here. And she doesn't source that, so. No. No, what, what she says is she's 
just allowed them to come to her home, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she keeps the money. Uh, I don't think any of them are having homeless people over to their home anytime and, soon. And by the way, yes. I mean, is is it really, is down payment assistance, I mean, if you don't have the money for a down payment, my guess is you don't have the money for that house. Right. Just saying. Yep. Okay. I know home ownership is, is kind of the definition of making it, you know, by a lot of people. Yeah. Especially previous generations. But, I mean... We, we we wonder why home prices continue to go up. You're subsidizing someone purchasing a home. Yeah. Therefore, how do you expect the price of that home to do anything but rise when the taxpayers are covering part of the cost? Yeah. It's what we talked about, Jay, with, with solar panels. When two-thirds of the cost is covered by us, yeah. the quality, efficiency, mm-hmm. and all and and price is never going to go down. Right. Solar companies should just double their prices. Hey, two thirds of it, Uncle Sam will pay for. Yeah. And so we're giving people homes. Are we requiring that they hold down jobs so that they can pay for those things? What happens if they go into default? Well, housing's a basic human right, according to Hennepin County. So well, nothing will happen unless you do it. You you can get foreclosed on, Jay. But right. These people can't. Right. Yeah, because I bought my house with my own money from my own sweat equity. I, yeah. I. <laughs> hey, providing yes. people with stable stable housing. Another priority is access to social workers. Oh, where well, they need that. I'm glad I'm paying for that. Oh. Boy, they need the social workers. <laughs> Another thing, talk about affordable. She says deeply affordable units. <laughs> she said unit. Oh boy. <laughs> the the board approved twenty seven million dollars on twenty two projects of Costa County that will create and preserve 1,900 affordable housing units. Uh, 1,900. Wow. That only costs $27 million. So that's $14,210 per unit. <laughs> what an efficient use of our tax dollars. Oh, yes. You I'll know tell it. you what. You got you to gotta hand it to Hennepin County if there's a... A one car parade uh, uh, anywhere, they could screw it up. By the way, now cold weather, according to Channel 5, fuels efforts to help, quote, unsheltered Minnesotans. Oh, no, no. It's not homeless anymore. Right. It's unsheltered. Yeah. You know, it's not. It's not global warming. It's climate change. It's not welfare. It's assistance. Yeah. It's not abortion it's reproductive rights we've gone back to this clintonian stuff of finding words that are less polarizing put them in front of a focus group or a think tank and we're back to that we're back to that Ugh. unsheltered minnesotans yeah Snow piled up on the roofs of tents and other makeshift shelters. This is from a couple of weeks ago, November 14th. At a homeless encampment in Minneapolis along the light rail. Of course it's a long light rail. Huh. I'm sure they're not paying to, to get on it either. You know, we have the uh, uh, honors program near the Cedar Riverside Station. The camp near 7th Street South has grown in size. Wait a minute, I thought we were spending all this money for yeah. homeless. What do you mean it's grown? I thought that was at a low, according to Marion Green. Tell you, if I was homeless, I wouldn't be living at Cedar Riverside. I wouldn't be living in Minnesota, I don't <laughs> think. In Hennepin County, there's an effort underway to help those who are unsheltered with a member of the Street to Housing Team. <laughs> I'll tell you what, <laughs> government's redundancy just never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. We're all actively working to reduce the numbers, urgently move people into housing, said Danielle Werder, 
with Hennepin County's Office to End Homelessness. Each person who is experiencing unsheltered homelessness has their own unique situation. No, they don't. They're homeless and they're living in a tent. What's unique about that? <laughs> Some of them pee standing up. Okay, what is unique? What is unique about homeless people? No offense. I'm, I feel bad, but I don't feel bad for people who don't help themselves. I don't feel bad for them. The new team launched a few months ago. Ooh, they just got, they went into the expansion draft where workers are going out to encampments and other places the unsheltered are staying and trying to connect them with housing resources or emergency shelters. Oh, yippee. Well, that that's a solution. We believe everyone needs dignified shelter. Yeah. I don't have to have shelter, Jay. It has to be dignified. Dignified shelter. Yes. And dignified housing, Werder said. And it's not okay or safe or appropriate for people to be outside, which is why we are trying to address the situation. Yeah, and you know what you're gonna do? Exactly what you said. Nothing. Nada. Yeah. People are homeless for a lot of reasons, and quite frankly, look, here's the thing. Everybody to a certain degree is responsible for where they are. Yeah. It may be to varying degrees, but ultimately, you are the number one reason you are where you're at. In not, most cases. Not some evil yeah. boogeyman somewhere. Um, but I personally think that most people are, are mostly responsible yeah. for where they are. Yeah. Now, I, I think we do need to do more to take care of our homeless vets, especially the ones that are suffering from mental illnesses, you know, with PTSD or whatever happened when they were fighting for our country overseas. I think that's a little different. I do, uh, but there's, like I said, why is it that the veteran mm -hmm. often has to seek out treatment? Right. Where these homeless folks get them coming to their tent. Yeah. Why is it why is it one way, you know, and not the other? Why Right, the vet is, has to be turned down four times from the VA before they can see any traction on anything. No kidding. You got to wait a month to see a doctor. I mean, there's I think a lot of vets try and can't fight the bureaucracy. Right. Yeah, I mean, I I do agree, but again, my idea of helping them yeah. Is not to go put them in a hotel for a week and oh, then no. let them go. No, that's, that's not help. Yeah, I mean that's I know it makes you people feel good, but it really isn't Yeah. That's how you end homelessness. No. So <laughs> So dignified shelter. Now. Yeah. Since their launch, the team has helped more than 230 people or families. Huh? People or families. According to Hennepin County. Help them what? <laughs> kind of journalism of that. They've helped to it at the top of do what? The team spent Monday trying to find 45 people on the streets who have recently been granted housing referrals. To let them know their long-term shelter was now available. The Minneapolis City Council, oh Christ, will discuss Tuesday afternoon a request from a couple of council members to have a nonpartisan group review the city's practices. Uh, yeah, right. In Minneapolis, it's going to be as nonpartisan as uh, the DNC headquarters. Oh, God. Let's, I'm going to try uh. to pronounce this name. Quote, this is going to be a long-term oh long process changing Minneapolis' approach to home. Why do you need a change in approach? What are you going to do? Have another study that, telling you what doesn't work when you already know what doesn't work? Here's an idea, Minneapolis. Whatever you think will work, do the opposite. <laughs> That's what will work. But anyway, said Aisha... Chugatai, 
Ward 10 Council member. Aisha Chugatai. Chugatai. The city of Minneapolis needs a more humane approach. Oh, Uh okay. That's the ticket. Chugatai, Chewbacca, that's what we're going to do Chewbacca, said she's been concerned how some camps have been cleared by the city and some people have lost important possessions. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what. That, that's that's my big worry, I'll tell you that much. It exacerbates the problem, and it's certainly not going to solve any crisis. Well, let me tell you something, Chewbacca. You went you in the ass at the same time. Okay, so why don't we just end the charade here? I mean, this is no better than Hennepin <laughs> County. They're just, they're, just, yeah. they're, they're just they're knuckleheads. They are knuckleheads. Oh, yeah. I See, I, I feel bad. I mean... The people who are homeless, you know, they get cleared out. They get separated from their stuff. You don't have a lot of money to go buy stuff, whatever. Right, I get and, but it. that's not a but solution either. Clearing them out and moving them to another part of Minneapolis? Yeah. What is that? Go live in another park. What? You know, it, it doesn't help. And unfortunately, a lot of these compassionate ideas really aren't that compassionate because it's such a temporary fix. You're not going to ever fix this problem. You know, you may find ways to alleviate some of the the pressures for a week or whatever, but it, it you're not going to be able to cause it to go away because the, the, the causes of homelessness are so vast and varied that there's no one-size-fits-all issue or, or solution to this issue. No, there's going to be a percentage of people. It's like unemployment. There's going to be a percentage of people unemployed for a certain amount of time, no matter what. Yes. Cyclical unemployment. It hap- Find me a country where that doesn't happen. Yeah. Even in a communist country where lever- everybody's held at gunpoint to do a job, they still have unemployed. Yeah. Okay? Now, I'll tell you what. Eviction, here's from NPR News. <laughs> Eviction monsoon uh. clouds Hennepin County budget talks. Listen to this. Yes. Hennepin County commissioners began here. Blah, blah, this is from, this is in October. I've been hearing budget proposals this week and sticking out in a list of single digit increases. Oh, hey, single digits was a request for a 42% budget increase. It came from the department that offers, among other things, legal representation to people facing eviction. Is that a county thing? Uh, A portion of that increase would fund additional staff to help tenants in court and connect them with... So, So if you haven't paid your rent... Yes. And you're facing eviction. I now have to provide you with an attorney. If you can't pay your rent, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I got to provide you with an attorney and other resources now. Yeah, I I don't get it. Since June, evictions statewide have averaged 520 a week. Is that a lot? Uh, I don't know. That's about a 50% higher than the pre-pandemic average. Well, okay, when you were told you couldn't be evicted, there's a percentage of people who just said, all right, live high on the hog. Yeah. So now they're being, now they've come to pay the piper and. Yeah. Whose fault is that? What is this person's name? Oh boy, I'm going to butcher this. It was initially a slow crescendo in eviction cases that turned into a monsoon, <laughs> said Jeanette Border. <laughs> Border. Borner. B O E R N E R. Boener. B O E R N E. Huh? B O E R N E R Borner Berner B O E R N E R Borner Berner I think Bear, whatever. I think when you have O E it's usually a, a okay so but she is the director she his hers is the director oh of 
I'm, I made that up. Oh, okay. Of adult representation services. <laughs> so she's representing adults, huh? I guess so. Boner said the increase is driven largely by the expiration of eviction moratorium that the state put in place during the height of this pandemic. Oh, okay. So you, you couldn't evict somebody. Now everybody has to pay the rent. Oh, and she's complaining that there's an increase in evictions? Well, yeah, these landlords haven't been paid. Exactly. Their property, right? They've got to be able to pay them a mortgage on the on the property. And the property taxes that keep going up yeah. and up and up. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you're right. That, that COVID moratorium is what caused this. Yes. She said people facing eviction should immediately seek legal help. It's a, how about pay your rent? That's what they should do. They should go down and get one of those open positions for $15 an hour at Taco Bell and start socking away money to pay back on the first. It's what, what did they do? Did they not work the entire time? A lot of them didn't. They were getting checks cut by the federal government. and So this is a 42%. I don't know if this got passed or not, but Boner is hoping that her budget... Ask earlier this week will result in five additional staff to help field such calls. So what what they need? What they need? They need uh, secretaries here. Yeah, probably. Or what? What would you call them? Like phone answerers? I guess so. Yeah. The rest of the budget increase would go toward establishing a legal team to help people facing civil commitment for mental health reasons what's that got to do with evictions i don't know if you got somebody who's currently the county does that work using uh, contractors oh, oh that's the problem yes we need permanent people not just paying them when we need right. them. right they have to be able to join the union well yeah this they is, have to this be is, able to they should get julie blah over in the uh auditor's office she ain't doing anything ah. get her get her over there yeah so there's another silly thing that your your county is doing jay <sighs> not a fan can i say that not a fan <laughs> it's like they don't know what they're doing you know they just keep throwing stuff up at the wall to see if it sticks nothing sticks and what are we doing with it? You know? Well, my, here's my question. Why is it none of the problems these people ever address ever get solved? Because they're not trying to solve it. You know? They act like they are. Well, they act like they are. But they're not doing the right things they need to do to solve it. They are trying to create for themselves a system in which... <laughs> It will continually get fed, and people will continually look to them for answers, and it's the best of both worlds because then they get to stay in power. And they'll provide no answers at all. At least they're consistent. Well, I guess so. Consistently bad is consist consistency. It's just oofta, you know? But, I mean, this isn't just a Hennepin County thing. I mean, we bring this stuff up. But it's easier to find the bigger county like this. But even at to lesser degrees, you find this kind of stuff happening uh, at other counties. I think every county has some sort of office to end homelessness. They may not call it that. They all have stuff fighting climate change. Um, they all have a 2050 yeah. Again, to varying degrees, and that's true. Um, but some things are just tried and true everywhere, I think. I think so. You know, well, and when it's being driven by here, the Met Council or out state by Mato, and you've got in the development when you know, the develop Minnesota plan uh that gets leaked out to each of the different um regional development organizations it and it pushes for the same things unless you have a county board that's willing to step up and stop those things although if you did you probably wouldn't have it in your 
plan anyways because they'd be stopping it uh, at the regional development organization, but they're not. It's getting through into all the all the comprehensive plans for all the counties and all the cities. Uh, you want to know how conservative your your county board is, your city council is. Look no further than the comprehensive plan and all of the stuff that it's trying to do. You know uh, to be relevant and hip. Okay, okay. Another one of your favorites. Huh. Angela Connolly. Ugh. I've been following her on Twitter a little bit. Yeah. What how's, is how's that going? What is the Metro D line? The D line? This weekend the Metro D line was launched from Mall of America to Brooklyn Center. Many stops in between. Oh, boy. Sounds like something I would never want to ride. I'll tell you that. Is that bus? Looks like a bus. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be a bus. Uh, It's bus rapid transit. It is a bus. Yes. Yeah, but rapid transit doesn't have a gazillion stops. Whole point of rapid transit. It can't be too rapid, can it? Uh, it is an 18-mile line connects neighborhoods and destinations in Brooklyn Center, Minneapolis, Richfield, and Bloomington. Bus rapid transit brings better amenities, faster service, and a more comfortable ride. How is it more comfortable? Like I said, the unhappiest people on earth are on a bus. <laughs> They're miserable yeah. human beings. Enhanced security. What is Hutch Hutcherson back on the case? <laughs> yeah. Paul, Paul Bart or whatever. <laughs> Paul Cop. Listen to this. Yeah. This is a large urban county symposium of the NACO. That's the National Association of Counties. Yeah. And their first session is addressing maternal morality. What? No, maternal mortality. Oh, okay. So what's that? Women deaths? Yes. Mother deaths. Okay, because yeah, just... she authored $10 million to advance work to reduce mortality for black and indigenous birthing people. Uh, you find me a birthing person that's not a woman. Yeah, so if a white woman dies, that's no big deal. Right, right, right. If right. black or an Indian dies, that's oh, different. You got to ring the bell. Sound the alarm. Yeah, I, that's just nuts. I'm sorry. Every life is is worth taking care of, and not just some protected class because you want to look trendy. Birthing people. I'm tweeting her right now. Are you? Oh, that's good. What you tweeting her? They said birthing people. You mean women? <laughs> Let's see how much hate mail you get after that. That'll be good. God, this woman is such a racist. By today, I authorized $400,000 amending the city's budgets to invest in black youth in communities surrounding George Floyd Square. But only black youth. Right. Right. Now, let me ask a question, Jay. If somebody authorized white youth, yes, they would be called a Nazi. They would be Absolutely. called Absolutely. Hitler youth. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So what the heck? Well, you see, white people have to check their privilege, Andrew. So it's... Uh... Yeah, take your privilege and <laughs> shove it you know where. Yeah. So this, this lady's just a loon. Just a loon. <laughs> Who else is on that on this board now? I don't know. I don't know either. You got Fernando Valenzuela. Yeah. You got what's her what's her nuts? <laughs> you got Marion Green. Green. You got uh Angela, Jeff Lundy. Yeah. Angela Connolly. Is that Deb Gattel or Guitel or something like that. Godel, is she still on it? <laughs> Goatle. The goat. There's I tell you what, there's no yeah. hope for this county. No. Zero. What a yeah. dump. Just what a dump. Well, have have you been to Minneapolis? No, I don't set foot in that city. 
Yeah, I, I tell you, I used to work down there, and it was eh, it was okay, you know. I never felt really unsafe. You once in a while you would see some weird stuff or whatever, but last time I ventured down there, I went down there to have. Uh, I I take that back. Uh, last summer I went to a Twins game. Yeah, and I last winter I went to a Timberwolves game. So yeah. that's. But my my my. Minneapolis experience is driving into a ramp huh. and walking into the stadium. <laughs> so call that what you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my last experience going downtown was enough to, to last me. I have a rule like with mall America, mall of America. I go, I can go once a decade and that's about where I'm at now with uh, downtown Minneapolis. So I, I go downtown and uh, I'm going to have coffee with this, guy i know because it's his birthday and he he lives down there and uh i feel bad about that but um so i walk into the caribou uh that is down off of nicolette mall and just west of 10th i think and i've just i i've never seen so much homosexual and transgender paraphernalia and and everybody declaring five times on different things around the store I'm a he, his, her, it, whatever. And and so it, I've never seen anything like this where it's just so down your throat, you know. Uh, anyways, get it, sit down, join some conversation and some coffee. This lady just kind of stumbles in and, and she's obviously on drugs, like, I don't know what she's on, if it's meth, if it's heroin, if it, what. And she's just really like standing in the corner and she's like, she looks like a zombie. And she, I've never seen anything like this downtown. And when we, when we were done, I left and I ended up walking past her again and just totally out of her mind. I mean, just broad daylight, it was like, 10 30 in the morning or something like that uh 11 o'clock in the morning on a weekday it, it wasn't no of course nobody's working yeah nobody's working down there that's <laughs> for sure um so here's this lady just all all drugged out and you know unfortunately i mean this is where things are heading i mean downtown used to i used to go for walks during lunch i was Every day for lunch, I was out walking. And yeah, when it was cold, I was in the Skyway. But when it was nice out, I was out walking on the streets. And I would go and I would sit at uh, Orchestra Hall where the fountain is there in the reflection pool. Or I would go to the government center and watch the fountain over there for a little bit or whatever. I never saw this kind of stuff. And there were so many people that were out and about and that were taking their breaks. And they were, you know... Yeah, it was like a ghost town. It was just eerie. And then, you know, to have this, it's it's funny. It's I used, changed. I used to go to Minneapolis quite often. First yeah. Avenue, I used to love to go. When I worked it down in the valley, I would get tickets to shows. Yeah. i watch wrestling down there. Um, I remember hanging out uh, before they had the city square whatever that was uh there was a bar called the nankin that had this drink called the wanderer that was like in a fishbowl uh 22 different rums or something in there it was pretty potent uh, uh downtown minneapolis used to be awesome I, yeah i i mean whatever you want to think of their politics i mean it was a happening place to be now people just can't move away fast enough and the people who are there are just clueless as to actually I don't think they're clueless. See, this is where you know playing dumb just is becomes so politically expedient. They know why people are leaving. Yes, they do. They know why businesses are closing. Yes, they do. They just can't reconcile it with their world points of view. You know, they they think the problem are the people that are leaving. Yeah, but it's I like, but you know what? I I think they know better than that. They're just since it conflicts with all of their social justice and all uh -huh. their woke causes and all their, uh, quite frankly, their hate, if you will. Yeah, um, they're not going to change course. Minneapolis is what it is, 
and it's never going to get better. I don't think it ever will. That's my personal prediction. I think that I think that city's best days were fifty years ago, and I think you can say that about a lot of big cities. Uh, New York is a place where yeah. people cannot leave fast enough. Um, no, you need somebody like a Rudy Giuliani to come into a city like that or a city like this and and lead it out. And and there's just nothing like that on the horizon. And and right now the people won't have it. And I don't get it. I really don't understand it. I don't get it either. Like, I don't. I don't understand why. Number one, a Rudy Giuliani type doesn't run. And I think the message that they send would be welcomed by a lot of folks. Yeah. I think a lot of folks have nobody to vote for. Your choices on the ballot are bad, worse, and worser. Yep. I think a lot of affiliated with any kind of party and are just yeah. running on safety or police or some issue like that. That really is somebody's best shot. I mean, you're <laughs> not going to win in Minneapolis being a Republican ever. Well, I, I don't know about ever, but baby steps. You have yeah. to go one step at a time. And I think Republicans have ignored big cities for a long time. They don't set foot in big cities. They all yeah. say they do, but I don't believe them, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I really just don't think they do. I think they hang out in the sparsely populated areas that they already have. Yeah. And that's their comfort level. And... um. Republicans have no get out the vote effort. They have no effort to register voters, particularly here. Of course, you don't register with a party here. But uh, I, I, again, you have to take baby steps. Right. And no baby steps are being taken. The situation won't fix itself. Correct. Oh. And I'll tell you where it also starts. Maybe it doesn't start in Minneapolis. Maybe it starts in Hennepin County. Maybe it starts in the suburbs. Maybe it starts in, you know, the county next to it. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it, it just um, it doesn't start in Washington. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it does not. If you're expecting some other. But, I mean, look, here's the thing. Hennepin County has gotten just worse and worse and worse. And I, I don't know what will turn it around at this point. Yeah. Um, I think, again, county commissioner is one of those jobs that most people can't name their county commissioner. It's, right. it's kind of, it's kind of, they, they kind of can operate in quietly where nobody sees it, whereas a governor or somebody can't. So mm -hmm. I think there's the, and I, I've mentioned this too about when, when, in this state, when Republicans look at election results, look, you can't do it with a governor candidate. When you, when you go to Hennepin County and you don't have a candidate for county attorney, sheriff, uh, you leave a dozen races unchallenged yeah. in the House and Senate, how do you expect a governor candidate to overcome that? How do you expect them to even yeah. make a dent no chance whatsoever. I mean, none. Yeah. You can't. If you're not willing to build it the right way, you're not building it on a good foundation and it'll crumble and fall every time. Yeah, I mean, it's the top-down view. It's always the top-down view, the sexy job view. Um, and it's just done nothing but get worse. That's all that's happened. Right. Oh, I don't know. I don't think... I. Jay, I think uh, we're stuck... We're stuck with this. This <laughs> what we have now for quite a while. I think we're stuck with. Oh, I hope not. But I think you're right. For things have got to get a lot worse before people get riled up enough to do something different. I think, unfortunately, and well, I agree with you. But what can get worse? What can get worse than Minneapolis right now? Yeah, nothing. I mean, I guess it could become, you know, Beijing or something or Tiananmen Square. But, I mean, I I just wonder how it could get worse. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, the numbers of, you know, murders and carjackings and rapes and uh, aggravated assaults and theft and that can all continue to go up. I mean, it could get a lot more dangerous. Yeah, it can, but it didn't move people to do anything differently. Yeah. Didn't move people to vote differently. So I, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that it will ever, ever change. Well, I hope so. I don't like that prognosis. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jay, I'm the eternal pessimist. You know that. Yeah. I have no hope. Uh, well, I guess that's where I have to come in and raise raise the, the tide. I don't know. Well, if you want to raise the tide, Jay... You are welcome to do that. Well, if the options are lay down and die or fight, I'm going to fight. I'm going to lay down. (laughs) I'm going to join them. Yeah, is that what you're going to do? I mean, why not? If you can't beat them, join them. I'll just join them. (laughs) Yeah, you will. Talk me out of it, Jay. Talk me out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Community Solutions once again prevents, presents. God, why do I always say that? We're going to prevent something, I don't know. Styling and profiling, jet flying, limousine riding, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun. Jay, talk me off a cliff. Yeah, that's uh, that's a tall order. Thelma and Louise. (laughs) Are things really that bad when you look at all the... Record inflation and the transgender stuff in the schools and the government spending way too much money and prioritizing things that are way off in Screwyville. Yeah, they really are that bad. But. You said talk me off a cliff. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. I'm getting there. They are, but. You know, we almost have to get to that point where things are too bad before we we stand up and do something. I don't know what to wait till things are so bad before you step in and do something, but I guess sometimes it is. So what are we going to do about that? How are we going to take charge and, and, and when we just can't get the support of, of people to, to stand up and do something? It, it doesn't seem like it's very hard for leftists to stand up and do something. They're sitting... In the majorities in almost every city council, county board, school board uh, that we've got. So why? How how do we fix that? Well, we need to be resolute. We need to come together and say it's it's not okay that this stuff happens. It's not okay that we're not able to come into agreement, put a plan together, and work to the detriment of the left. But here we are. Here we are, and we've got to figure it out. And I, I believe that we can. I really do. But it's going to take everybody doing their part. There's no more sloughing off. There's no more saying, oh, well, we can't win and, and not participating. There's no more. I'm I'm not able to make a difference. You are able to make a difference. So I don't know. I can sit here and yell and scream and kick and whatever till I'm blue in the face. But in the end, it really has to be about us. So when do we push forward? When do we come into a place of realization where it's do or die? Because there are enough of us to change things in this state. There are enough of us to stand up and say no. There are enough of us to take all these crazy policies and tell the left to hit the road. But it takes time. It takes energy. It takes All of the things that we're not doing to make it happen. So let's let's come together. 
Let's think about this. Let's let's come up with first. Let's make our hearts resolute that that we are going to make a difference. Let's say it together. We are going to make a difference. We are going to make a difference. And then once we have decided that in our heart, we need a plan. And once we come up with a plan, we need to come up with the the where are we going to get resources, who are we going to link arms with, all of that. But we're out here. We're out here looking to link arms. We're out here looking to do the right thing. We're out here looking to take the enemy down so that there is not the resistance that we are currently experiencing because we just don't have the numbers. I know we have the numbers because I've looked at the numbers. I've looked and seen how many like-minded people have voted in the office of governor, in the office of president, in the Senate races. I know that we have what we need. So I just ask for you to come on board, to make a statement, and to never give up. We can do this if we'll stick together. We can and we will. So if there's anything going on in your community, you want to let us know, you want to say that, hey, I, I want to get into this position, how do I do it? We're here. So just come, bring yourself, <laughs> and let's take all this on. Get a hold of us at commsolutionsmn at gmail.com if you think you can do something. At C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. And the nice thing is, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. But we want you all to believe that you can so that we can do what we need to do. We love you, Minnesota. But now it's your turn to get to work. If I get too caught